Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Health and Wellness with myself, Dr. Nafisa Jalal. This is the first episode of 2019, so with that, I wish you and your loved ones a happy and healthy new year to come. Today's show will focus on a topic that surfaces both on health and wellness. It's one that I think most of us have heard about but may not be informed enough about, and I'm very excited about the conversation that we're going to have today, and we're going to be talking about chiropractic care. And in studio with me, I have someone that I know is phenomenal at what she does because she helps me every week uh, with with my issues and we have in studio Miranda Vanderbeek who is a doctor of chiropractic welcome to the show Miranda thank you so much for having me great to have you so let's jump right into the conversation we've got lots to talk about today tell our guests what is chiropractic care what is what does that look like so basically what chiropractic is it's a non-invasive and hands-on healthcare discipline uh, that really deals with the musculoskeletal complaints that a patient might have Um, and chiropractic actually does come from ancient Greek and means done by hand so as you can imagine a lot of the therapy that we do is manual therapy um, which means just with our hands mm-hmm. that's interesting I didn't I didn't realize the Greek uh, or how to connection to it what do the qualifications look like so when we go to a chiropractor are we going to a doctor are we going to a wellness specialist same type of qualifications so with chiropractic um, we graduate with a doctor of chiropractic degree um, or a DC Uh, so what the education kind of looks like is after university you go to a chiropractic college for an extra four years of full-time study um, and within that four years there There's a 12-month clinical internship where you get hands-on time working with patients under the supervision of a licensed chiropractor. Um, And then you go on and graduate with your doctor of chiropractic and have to write a number of uh, Canadian board exams in order to be regulated to practice uh, and licensed to practice in Canada. That is definitely a lot of work. (laughs) But I ask because a lot of people have this notion that perhaps someone in physiotherapy or chiropractic care doesn't often have as rigorous of a level of training that someone in just plain medical care or a family physician would. So this is interesting to know because you have a lot of experience in the manual work that you're doing. Absolutely. Tell us about the benefits. I mean, there's there's a lot of it, the aches and pains that people come to you for. What is what is that about and beyond that what are the benefits of going to a chiropractor why should people use it absolutely so there's a lot of benefits for chiropractic um, for potential patients so obviously when they come in with pain um, our main objective is to try and decrease that pain as quickly and efficiently as possible Um, but other than just the decrease in pain chiropractic can help with improving function and movement of the body helps improve posture uh, can also help with improving range of motion and flexibility, as well as with headaches, the typical neck pain, back pain, um, even pregnancy-related back pain, uh, we can can help manage um, Mm -hmm. and assess differences in uh, gait and foot pain as well. That's really interesting, the foot pain I hadn't thought about separately, Mm -hmm. but very, very important. I think the flexibility part of it we sometimes don't think about automatically either. A lot of us, I know, first time that I looked for chiropractic care was because of my back pain with the hours that I sit at the office and in front of the laptop Mm -hmm. and so forth. So I find that 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 to be the most common thing that sometimes we think about. But the flexibility part of it is is important as well, Mm -hmm. and migraines and headaches and whatnot. So what conditions then do you treat? Are there certain conditions? I mean, people who are diabetic or other conditions that automatically chiropractic care would be prescribed for? Um, So in general, what's within our scope of practice is musculoskeletal complaints. Um, So the most common complaints that Canadians see their chiropractor for uh, are neck pain, back pain, headaches, uh, even whiplash or sprain strains, arthritis, uh, and like you said, workplace or sports related injuries. Uh, Very, very common for patients to come in to see a chiropractor for. Interesting. And what does this treatment look like? So we've talked about the fact that you use your hands. Do you use any equipment as well, or is it just the hands? So there are different types of uh, treatment that chiropractors can provide, and some are certified in um, extra courses, for example. Um, so you may have heard of Graston, which is more of an instrument-assisted way of addressing soft tissue. Okay, I haven't heard of them actually. Okay. okay. So Graston, um, it's more of a handheld tool that you'll use to um, release soft tissue there or soft tissue just like muscles um, 
but for the most part, chiropractic is uh, more so working with your hands. So whether that's releasing the muscles with your hands, providing adjustments, uh, which is kind of the bread and butter of chiropractic, if you will, um, that's something that, that uh, is very typical in a chiropractic treatment. I was just going to ask you about adjustments. I know the very first time I came in to you and you said we're going to do an adjustment, <laughs> I really had no idea what that what that meant. Yeah. So what is an adjustment? Are you aligning certain things? Does it have something to do with the spinal cord? What does that mean? So what a chiropractic adjustment is, is um, it's a very highly skilled and precise movement of a joint, uh, again, typically applied with the hands of the chiropractor. Mm -hmm. um, and the point of an adjustment is to help reestablish movement and function in that joint and within that area. Okay, that's that's really interesting. And going along with that, I remember when you first mentioned the word popping. You're gonna, mm -hmm. I'm gonna <laughs> pop this, and I thought, okay, this is uh, <laughs> sounding interesting. W what does that popping sound come from? Is it always a popping sound that you hear when you are popping something? And what what does that mean? So typically, we don't say we're, I'm going to pop mm. this part of your mm. body, but it is the adjustment. Um, and sometimes patients will hear a popping sound associated with that, um, and they might be a little concerned as to what it is because you don't really experience that daily, particularly with your neck. Exactly. Yeah, so all that popping sound is, is with the adjustment, the joint surfaces separate quickly and a gas bubble is released. Okay. And that's when you hear that popping sound. So if you can imagine um, a suction cup on a window, for example, mm -hmm. and you separate those surfaces, you pull the suction cup off and you hear that sound. Um, that's all that's really going on with the adjustment as well, just really quickly separating um, and you'll hear that sound. And so whether you hear the sound or not, the adjustment is still taking place. Yes, so some people okay. don't experience um, uh, the popping, the typical popping sound, um, but that doesn't, it's not required for an adjustment because the adjustment again is just helping to reestablish that movement and function in the joint, in the area, um, but sometimes people will experience that, that sound as well. Because mm -hmm. I remember in the beginning when I would come to you, when I heard the popping sound, I would feel like, okay, something's happened yeah. and I'm suddenly <laughs> better now. But it's not every single time that, that yeah. we do, but it's, the treatment is still nevertheless equally effective. Absolutely. Right. Okay. As long as we're reestablishing that movement in the joint. Perfect. And in terms of care, are we talking ongoing care? If, if I come, say, with certain conditions, what does someone need to keep in mind for this is when I'm going to feel better? Is it weeks, months? When can we expect to see a change? So how long you see a chiropractor uh, is ultimately up to the patient. Okay. So when you come in to see me for treatment, um, and if you're in pain, I'll obviously treat until um, that particular complaint uh, has subsided. So whether that's one week, two weeks, three weeks, it depends on the extent of the complaint, mm -hmm. as well as the way that your body responds to treatment and heals. Um, so it's very dependent on, on the patient. It's not something that I can give a cut and dry answer on. Mm -hmm. um, but again, with ongoing treatment, that's a very personal thing for the patient. Some patients only like to see a chiropractor when they are in pain, while others like ongoing treatment um, to kind of prevent further injury from occurring. Okay, so you've touched an important word there, prevention. I've never really thought about chiropractic care in the context of prevention. I've only thought that it's something that I would use after I feel, say, intensive back pain or after an injury or after an accident, but never as a pre preventive measure to well-being per se. Are there a lot of patients who come in for the sense of prevention that this is going to prevent us from from getting back pain or a certain intensity of it? So oftentimes people do come in with pain and that's their initial kind of exposure to chiropractic is when they do have a certain complaint or a certain injury. Um, but after that, once they're out of that kind of cycle of pain, they may want to continue with treatment um, just to kind of keep things uh, aligned, moving well, keep the muscles, um, whether it's stretched or strengthened, just to kind of keep on top of what's going on in their body. Uh, because 
with our daily lives, what we do every single day is typically how our body will respond to pain. So if we're constantly at our desk working long hours and our posture may not be the best, it doesn't matter if you end up um, kind of seeing a chiropractor just for one day a week, it matters what you do every day. Uh, so not only do we treat you um, for your current complaint, but we also give you tools that you can take home with you and use, whether it's at the office, at home, just to help yourself as well uh, to um, get maintain you that. Yeah, exactly. To maintain the sense of well-being and to prevent uh, that that bad posture adding to your sense of pain. One thing that you said that's very important here is what we do every day matters. Yes. And I think sometimes we'll go to certain service providers and we'll say, this is going to cure everything for me. I'm here now, fix this for me, and I'm going to be fine. But that's clearly not the case because through our daily activities in our lives and what we do every day physically, um, we sometimes perpetuate further further posture issues or so forth. So I guess the ongoing treatment does make sense if, um, if, if that's something that's possible for a patient, right? Yeah. Even whether it be on whatever interval makes sense for them. Yeah, absolutely. So that's, that's definitely really good. Tell me what people need to look at when they're thinking about selecting a chiropractic um, professional. Yeah, so that's um, something that's a little bit tricky to give uh, particular advice for because every patient is different. They, whether it's they enjoy a certain personality for their healthcare provider or they like a certain aspect of treatment, uh, it's a very personal thing. Um, but what I would recommend when selecting a healthcare provider, whether it's physio or chiropractic, um, I would recommend asking friends and family or coworkers if they have any recommendations or even other healthcare practitioners, uh, what they, who they would recommend. Um, and then you can kind of hear firsthand experience of how that practitioner treats right. and deals with patients. Uh, so you get a better understanding of whether or not they'll be best suited for you before you even go and see them. So the qualification we're just really looking for is the doctor of chiropractic. Yes. So anyone who has that is licensed to do this work. Yeah, you can have your doctor of chiropractic. They should be licensed in good standing, obviously, with their um, regulatory body. Um, but with a doctor of chiropractic, they've undergone the, the schooling and everything mm -hmm. for that. Okay, perfect. So then pretty much the credential will be that. And then in terms of everything else, it's no different than selecting any other professional for, you know, say a mental health counselor or so forth. It's really just what adjusts with you and and what works in terms of personality type and uh, convenience, I guess, and schedule and so forth. Yeah, there are other um, certifications that you can take okay. within chiropractic. So depending, again, on, on the way that you um, enjoy treatment, if you like more instrument assisted and you want somebody certified in that, you can look for those different credentials. Um, but overall, it's primarily um, you're looking for a doctor of chiropractic. Okay. And the people who use, the professionals that use the instruments more, is it still under the same doctor of chiropractic title or would they be doing something slightly different or have a different specialization? Um, not necessarily. It's like I said, it's, it is just a certification that you, that you can um, get uh, and it's just an adjunct to chiropractic care. So it's just another tool in the toolbox that uh, we're able to to use and pull out when you need it for certain exactly, patients and certain, certain conditions, patients. right? More or less effective than just using the hand? Should we look for a treatment that includes the, the instruments and the hand both or does it really matter? It depends on patient preference a lot. Um, so sometimes with the instruments, um, I mean, there there is quite a bit of evidence for, for their effectiveness and they can be very beneficial, particularly for certain conditions. However, um, I, Personally, while I do use them for certain areas of the body, I like to use my hands and I like to um, kind of feel what the muscle is doing and if it has um, kind of released uh, when I'm doing my treatment. Now it's interesting because I didn't even know there was the um, option of instruments. I, I don't think we've ever used one, but then no. you've been very good with just the hands and it's been, it's been really, really great that way. In terms of access to these services then, um, we want to talk about whether it's something that everyone can access even if they don't have health care and so forth, but I am going to take a very short break. Please stay with us and we will continue this conversation. Thank you.
light. I love it. Unlocked Android phone. Two SIM card slots for two numbers and travel needs. 13 megapixel camera with 1080 HD recording. 16 gigabyte internal memory, which is expandable for more photos, videos, and music. Over 250 stores to open by 2018. K Mobile. जिंदगी की दौड़ में आगे रहने के लिए आप कितनी मेहनत करते हैं और वक्त है जो हाथ नहीं आता इसीलिए अब पेश है हबीब झटपट जी हाँ फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम हबीब पेश करता है रेडी टू कुक रेसिपी मसाला मिक्स इसमें है सारे इंग्रेडिएंट्स यानी प्याज टमाटर लहसुन अदरक काटने की झंझट से छुटकारा और लज्जत से भरपूर खानों का मजा बगैर किसी मेहनत के वो भी झटपट नो एम एस जी एडेड ग्लूटिन फ्री यानी बचत लज्जत और सेहत साथ साथ विद हबीब झटपट This is the world of internet. You have everything on your computer and mobile screen. If you wish to promote your business through internet, especially to perfect target market, then you have just one reliable name, NJ Marketing, offering various marketing solutions like social media marketing, telemarketing, email marketing, search engine optimization, graphic designing, web designing and development, and mobile application development. So call now at 647-824-1485 or email at njmarketing15 at gmail.com or log on to njmarketing.ca Singla Jewelers presents exquisite gems green, yellow and blue sapphire and loose diamonds committed to providing superior modern diamond jewelry of exceptional quality at an unbeatable price a designer store for loose diamonds diamonds jewelry and precious gems Singla Jewelers for an appointment call 905-512-2336 Are you sure about it? Let's do it then. The Family Law Lawyers at Alam Law Chambers will be with you during your stressful divorce and custody battle so that the best possible result can be found for you and your children. Reliable and affordable Alam Law. Welcome back to Health and Wellness with Dr. Nafisa Jalal. We are in studio speaking about chiropractic care today, and we are here with our guest, Miranda van der Beek. Miranda, thanks again for being here. Thank you. Just before we left for the break, we were talking about whether we need a referral for chiropractic service from our physician, um, if it's covered by insurance. So let's talk about how we can access these services. We've definitely established it's very beneficial, um, whether you have something severe or whether you're looking to be preventative um, in, your, in your physical wellness when it comes to muscle aches and pains and flexibility and posture. So do we need a referral from a physician in order to access you and other um, chiropractic professionals? No, you don't. So um, in Canada, in all of the provinces, chiropractors are um, legislated as a primary care professional. Okay. So you can consult with them directly. You don't need a referral from uh, a medical doctor. That being said, chiropractors and medical doctors do tend to work closely as well. Um, and if a medical doctor does have a patient who they think might benefit from chiropractic care, they'll freely refer to chiropractors as well and vice versa. Perfect. Okay. So I, I didn't know about the primary care part. That's excellent. Was that something that's recently been legislated or it's always been the case? Or um, I'm not sure how long it actually has been, but um, since I've been a chiropractor, yeah. uh, we've been primary care. Uh, that's excellent because yeah. the benefits of it are really great for the everyday person as well. So in terms of um, it being covered by insurance plans, is it, is it usually something that's because it's primary care? Is it usually easily covered or do people pay out of pocket? How would they go about that? Yeah, so typically with um, the extended health care plans, chiropractic is covered. Um, there's usually a typical amount that, that you do get with those plans for chiropractic. Um, with most of the large companies, at least, I'm assuming. 
Yes. Okay. Okay, perfect. And if you don't have insurance coverage per se, what about those in the population that can't afford clinic fees and services? Are there subsidized costs or do most private clinics have subsidized costs as well? So um, if kind of the chiropractic costs are a little expensive or um, certain low-income um, citizens were trying to seek chiropractic care. Within Canada, some of the provinces do have um, public funding for um, different, uh, just the general population and different subgroups like seniors or low-income citizens. Uh, so that could be something that you can look at as well. Um, but if you're in the GTA, another option is the chiropractic college here, the Canadian Memorial Chiropractic College, okay. does have a number of clinics around the GTA where fourth year chiropractic interns, again under the supervision of a licensed chiropractor, um, treat patients in order to gain that experience and the hands-on experience. And because there are, they are um, students, the chiropractic fees are reduced. So that that's is another. brilliant. I didn't know that yeah. such, such a thing existed. I don't know if a lot of people knew that yeah, a so lot within, of this existed. Within the GTA, that's something that you can definitely take advantage of. Okay, and this was the Memorial College you said? Canadian Memorial Chiropractic College, or Perfect. CMCC. CMCC, okay. Let's, let's definitely take a note of that for all of our guests who have thought about using the service, but either don't have the insurance coverage for it, the extended benefits. Uh, some of, a lot of people don't have extended benefits with their with their jobs, um, this is great taxes. Mm -hmm. So that way you get you get at least exposure to it. Yes. And see if this is something that you want to continue. And because they're being supervised, you're not going to be um, any any different in terms of the service you're provided. No. Right. That's perfect. Wonderful. So, tell us about who can use chiropractic services. Is it what about children um, that have certain conditions? What about the elderly? Is it a certain population that you target or clients that you're seeing more of, like the working age people per se because of the uh, physical pain that we've been speaking about with uh, sitting in a desk all yeah. day? <laughs> yeah, so that's typically kind of the largest uh, group of individuals yeah. that, that do seek chiropractic. But um, chiropractic patients range from infants to the elderly you can get a very infants as well yeah you can get a very large scope of patients um, and there's chiropractic care that's suited for, for oh. everyone and infants would come in because of it wouldn't be the obviously yet the uh, desk issues and the workplace what kind of would it be certain conditions that they were born with or not not necessarily sometimes um, the birth process can lead to um, kind of some neck pain or issues with with babies just because of the way that um, they were delivered. Uh, so they can have some some neck issues that chiropractic can help with. It's very um, interesting. I never thought of infants as a population. Yeah, um, and with, with um, children as well, uh, it can be a very helpful group for yeah. them to get in to see chiropractors because you can imagine learning to walk, learning to ride a bike, just all of the activities that go with mm -hmm. childhood. There's a lot more bumps and bruises and uh, injuries that happen. So um, it can be very beneficial to kind of help with those injuries yeah. and again, help prevent those injuries from, from happening in the future if possible. Very important message because absolutely, I personally never thought that children would be a targeted demographic for this for this service at all. And the elderly, I assume, are also um, can benefit from this. Yeah, absolutely. So again, it's everyone has the same musculoskeletal yes. system. We can all have those same kind of aches and pains um, during the different uh, development. Obviously, there might be certain things that you see more or less of. Uh, but with the elderly, we can definitely help with um, reducing those those typical aches and pains that come with with aging, whether it's arthritis, which is a big part of what we do as well. Right, arthritis would be perfect for that actually, yeah. Yeah, or um, just helping to strengthen and stabilize um, the, the individual and the patient uh, because a lot of the time um, people are deconditioned and their muscles aren't able to kind of support their body and their spine in the way that will help with uh, reducing pain. So particularly with the elderly, it's a large part of um, rehabilitation and that strengthening component for sure. The strengthening would be key 
because Absolutely. as we're getting older, a lot of our body isn't supporting us 100% in the way that it used to. So the strengthening part would be very, very beneficial. Mm -hmm. Tell me about, um, I often hear about chiropractic care in the same breath as physiotherapy. And I don't know if everyone knows the difference. Um, what is the big difference between those two services? So uh, we both deal with the musculoskeletal system. Okay. So in that sense, we are very kind of similar. Um, our schooling is pr probably the, the most uh, common area where we differ. Okay. So a physiotherapy degree is closer to what a master's degree is, um, mm -hmm. typically a two-year program where uh, a doctor of chiropractic does that full four years um, and we have the ability to diagnose patients as well with the title of um, chiropractic. Um, so that's, that's some differences there. What mm -hmm. we specialize in and that we train all four years for is uh, the spinal adjustment. Okay. Um, so just the chiropractic manipulation, whether it's uh, spinal or we actually adjust extremities as well. So most joints in the body we, we can adjust. Um, so that's where we are highly trained. Uh, and some physiotherapists are uh, taking some courses in, in adjusting and they are learning how to manipulate as well. But that's where we are very highly trained. So with physiotherapy then, spinal um, health is not their primary, is it? It's, it's not as focused on just spinal health, I understand. Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. Physiotherapy is, um, has a much wider, has, has a wider breadth. Yeah. But that being said, chiropractic as well is not just spinal health. Right, 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 of course. So it's not just neck yes. and back pain that we do yes. address. It's, you address the whole body really, exactly. really in all parts of it. That's, 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 that's interesting. Absolutely. Well, we are very excited to see a live demo. Um, I find that speaking about things is very interesting, but seeing a few things live is always wonderful. So right after the break, what we have for you uh, is uh, Miranda is going to be showing us a live demo of Miranda. What are we going to be seeing? So what we're going to be doing is, um, just for that demographic that is working in the office a lot, okay. just giving them a couple of stretches uh, to do throughout the day just to help ease their pain and put their body in a little bit of a better posture. This is great because we just spoke about the fact that it's not just what you do when you're here for your visits with your chiropractic professional or physiotherapist or anyone else it might be. It's what you do every day. So we have to make sure that we have a few things in place during the day that we can do to maintain ourselves in between our visits to come see you or other professionals. Uh, so that's really something I'm looking forward to. We will be right back with you. Please stay with us. Open biggest store of 22 and 24 karat gold jewelry in Malton. Gold House Jewelers. New collection just arrived from Dubai, Pakistan, and India. Call Shahid or Junaid. 905-672-0786. Purity is guaranteed. Gold House Jewelers. We at Altbarka Travel are passionate about our client's entire journey, from dream to experience to memory. We are not only the number one Umrah agent in Canada, but also guarantee the cheapest airfare to Pakistan, India, Middle East, and Europe. Albarka Travel, combining your ideas with its experience and expertise to deliver you the most enjoyable travel experience and vacation packages possible. Get in touch at 905-232-6566. Albarka Travel, explore the world with us. हमने अपनी कामयाबी से बढ़कर जीता है अपनी कम्युनिटी का एतमाद और भरोसा वाजिद मलिक एंड टीम अ टीम ऑफ टॉप ऑफ द लाइन रियल स्टेट एंड फाइनेंशियल एडवाइजर्स इन जीटीए फ्रॉम कमर्शियल टू रेजिडेंशियल यानी आपके पहले घर से कामयाबी के इंतहा तक हर कदम माप के साथ वाजिद मलिक एंड एहसान वली कॉल नाउ 416-827-3333 or visit wajidmalik.com Aerohan, an exclusive multi-designer studio specialized in wedding planning services, bridal wear, casual
casual party wear, jewelry, shoes, purses, dupattas, men's and kids' clothes. You name it, we have it. Some of the Pakistani designer labels we carry are Zani K, Aga Noor, Sana Sakinas, Anas Abrar, Zainab Chutani, Wahaj Khan, Fatma Khan and many more. Parahan, sheer elegance. We believe in quality service and best price. You can contact 9075 Derry Road West, unit number 1, Milton, Ontario. Rang wali, bharam wali, news wale, views wale, mail wale, mail wale, Karachi wale, khaybar wale, Lahar wale, Pindi wale, in short pure Pakistan wale. Welcome back to Health and Wellness with Dr. Nafisa Jalal. We are towards uh, the end of our show where we're going to be doing the live demo component. So Miranda, remind us again of what we're going to see. Is it some, some exercises that we should be doing in our office chair, if we have a desk job that is? Um, yeah, so if you're working in an office, obviously it's best to try and get up and move around as much as possible throughout the day. So mm -hmm. to break up your day every half hour if possible. Okay. To okay. Um, just walk around, stretch a little bit. But um, these are some things that you're able to do in your chair uh, just to kind of stretch the areas that are, are tight uh, and contract the areas which tend to get weakened and just help to uh, strengthen that a little bit as well. Excellent. Take it away and All I right. will follow you. <laughs> okay. So um, one that we can do is to stretch the muscles. They're called the upper trapezius. Okay. And those are those muscles just right up here that tend to get very, very tight, um, especially with desk work when you're at your, at your computer typing away. So what you can do to stretch that out is just bring your ear to your shoulder. Okay. And then with your other hand, just gently place it um, over your head just to add a little bit of overpressure. Okay. Just gentle. And then take a few deep breaths. As you're taking those deep breaths, it just helps the muscle to relax because when you're when you are breathing, you're not able to tense that muscle, so it a bit, it forces a bit more. I feel the stretch in yeah. the neck, which is which is great. Yeah, absolutely. You can hold that for 30 seconds and then release, and then mm. you can repeat the same thing on the other side. Yeah, and absolutely. Feel the stretch in the yeah. neck. Yeah, and you can do that as much as required throughout the day. It's a really good one just to, to have. Okay. Um, and another Not every half an hour, though, you're thinking. Not every half an hour that we get up or something. Just a couple no. times a day is enough. Yeah, okay. uh, whenever you're kind of feeling those tight muscles, I would recommend at least twice a day okay. uh, because those muscles are kind of the ones that are used um, a lot and they tend to overcompensate when your posture is... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, not as good or, or you're just using the larger muscles to compensate for the weaker, smaller muscles. So and the they, weak, is this a weaker or is this a larger? This is a larger muscle a larger that muscle. tends to constantly be tight. Yes, yes, yes. I can relate to that, that yeah. feeling 100%, yes. So okay. um, another stretch that you can do similar to the one that we just did is for um, another muscle uh, which goes from your shoulder blade, the top of your shoulder blade, okay. up to the side of your neck okay. and it's called your levator scapula. Elevator scapula, okay. Levator scapula. Levator yeah. scapula. Yeah. Perfect. So what you can do is you can look down towards your underarm. You can do okay. um, both sides. So if you were looking down towards your right underarm, mm -hmm. uh, then you would be stretching out the left side. Oh, and I feel it right here. Yep. Yeah, so you can, again, with your hand, just hang on to your head and uh, just let the overpressure bring your head down towards your underarm and take a few deep breaths here as well just to help the muscle to relax. I absolutely feel that, yeah. Yeah. This muscle also can be particularly tight uh, because when we are working at our desks or driving, we tend to have what's called forward head posture. Right. And when our head is forward, you can imagine that this muscle, which goes from your shoulder blade to the side of your neck, mm -hmm. 
it kind of acts like the reins on, on a horse's bridle, trying right. to bring your head back. So oftentimes they're really tight because yeah. they're constantly contracted, trying to bring your head back into a bit of a better position. And it's so natural how we are protruding in our posture. Yeah. We don't really even think about it anyway. Yeah. But when we are driving, when we're using a laptop, automatically we just become like this. Yeah. So no wonder that pressure is hour after hour during the day. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the area, those two muscles in particular kind of lead to that dull ache that people mm -hmm. feel uh, in this area. Very common again with office work. The top, the upper back pain is probably one of the most common things that I think people who are in a desk job experience, statistically yeah. even, yeah. It's, it's a large component yeah. for sure. All right. Oh, feels a little bit better already. <laughs> so another that we can do, um, you can also do this against a wall. Um, they're called chin tucks. Okay. So as we're seated here, a way that we can do it is just with our own hands providing okay. resistance. So what we're gonna do is just put our hands, uh, just, back, okay. just interlace them at the back of your head. Mm -hmm. And what you're going to do is you're going to try and tuck your chin without bending your head forward. Okay. Just gently tuck your chin back mm -hmm. and you'll feel your head Head, um, just the, the back of your neck start oh, to Oh, I feel it. And what yeah. you're doing here is you're stretching out small muscles that go from uh, the back of your skull to your neck, and you're stretching those out while strengthening the muscles in the front of your neck. Because when you are in that uh, forward head posture where your head is, is protruding, protruding yeah. a little bit more forward, the muscles again back here get very tight and try to hold your head back while these muscles, because they're stretched, mm -hmm. um, disengage and they're not activated as easily so they can weaken um, because they are in that constant kind of stretched position. So by doing this and stretching out those back muscles mm -hmm. there um, and strengthening these muscles, it'll help just stabilize the area um, and again, bring your neck in a little bit of a better position, but you're just going to Again, just push your head into your hands and provide yeah. a little bit of resistance there for about 30 seconds again. And you can relax and repeat that about five times. Um, and you can do that twice a day. That really does feel. I understand this part of the muscle being activated when we do this posture. How does it strengthen this part of the neck though? Because we're not really using this muscle. Are we actively or we are, you are actively, in that yeah. position? Okay. So you're stretching out those muscles here and as you're stretching those out and you're tucking your chin, you are engaging these right. muscles. Right, I see it now yeah. in you, yeah. Yeah, so you actually are engaging those muscles. Okay. Um, and it, to begin with, it does feel like it is um, quite an easy movement, but it's one just to kind of wake up those muscles, mm -hmm. get them working again and get them um, strengthened in a little bit more of a gentle way to begin with mm -hmm. since they are, they, they do tend to be deconditioned. No, I could feel that for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it makes sense with, yeah. the, with the back pain. And then there's one that you can do as well, just one other stretch that you yeah. can do just in your in your chair. You'll yeah. scoot a little bit forward okay. so that you're closer to the edge. Okay. This one's called Brugger's Stretch. And everything that you're doing at your desk, the rounded shoulders, mm -hmm. the chest is down, mm -hmm. the head is forward, this position is going to reverse all of that um, and give you a, kind of a position of relief. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to raise your chest. Right. So kind of think that there's a string pulling your chest forward. Okay. You're going to bring your palms up and try and rotate your uh, thumbs towards as far as you can to the ground. Okay. Okay. So chest up, squeeze your shoulder blades back. And again, similar to what we just did with the chin tuck, you're going to tuck your chin mm -hmm. and you're just going to um, hold this position for 30 to 60 seconds. Oh, I feel a lot of things. Um feeling like something's happening. Yeah, so it's just rolling your shoulders back. It's, yeah. it's really doing everything um, that's opposite to what we do in that desk posture. Right, and I'm feeling something in my, not upper, but almost middle back as well. Yeah, so when you're squeezing those shoulder yeah. blades together, um, it's contracting those muscles right in that area. Exactly. Yeah, and that helps to kind of bring your mid back into a better position. Right. At the same time as strengthening those muscles, 
that again, like I've been saying, in that desk posture, when our shoulders are rounded, mm -hmm. they get stretched out. So mm -hmm. by bringing your shoulders back, contracting them, strengthening them, it just stabilizes the whole area uh, if you do it consistently and will help prevent future pain from occurring. It's amazing to see how interconnected our body is mm -hmm. and how interconnected the muscles are to everything. Absolutely. Because sometimes we think about a muscle here not actually impacting a muscle up here, but it, it does in some way or other. Yeah, there are, there's a lot of different things that yeah. um, can impact the way that you feel pain and where you feel pain. So even the way that somebody walks um, can impact low back pain. So that's why one of the things that chiropractors can do is to assess somebody's gait, see if there's uh, something going on with the way that they're walking or even the shoes that they're wearing, mm -hmm. which are contributing to some of their aches and pains. So it's taking a look at the individual as a whole mm -hmm. and really finding exactly what it is, whether it's the way they're walking, some other differences biomechanically that's going on with their body or the way their body's moving and try to address not only the area of pain that they're experiencing, um, but also the underlying cause of why they're feeling that pain. Absolutely, because unless we get to the root cause of what's happening and change that, this is going to persist, yeah. right? You can only do a treatment here and there, but it's going to persist, so it's yeah. important to understand. Also, the interconnectedness of the services that are out there, because we just spoke about the feet and posture and walking, so orthopedic care then is also tied in to that. So it seems like to have a comprehensive um, approach to wellness is a very important one. Mm -hmm. Because if you really wanna be your healthiest self and you're living day to day where you have to do certain things, be in certain postures, can't avoid the desk job, can't avoid the driving in the car, especially in the city where everything is a car right away. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's important then to maybe look at the whole holistic range of services that are out there and chiro uh, chiropractic is definitely a, a huge part of it. Yeah, and that's not something that a lot of people think about with chiropractic yeah. because it is so, um, when people think of chiropractic, it yeah. is kind of associated with the spine, um, the spine in isolation most of the time, but we do treat a multitude of different musculoskeletal complaints. Mm -hmm. um, so it is a good resource to, to take advantage of. No, I think really, really good to know because like I said, when I first thought about this, it was because of the back pain and I thought maybe my spine and the back and the upper back um, and that's what pushed me. But I love how you've mentioned the preventative aspect on the show as well, that for someone who's feeling otherwise okay, there's still no harm in going into a chiropractic clinic and saying, you know what, maybe once a month I can sort of come in and make sure that everything's in place and I'm in my best shape, mm -hmm. spinal cord wise, flexibility wise, making sure that everything's sort of working the way it needs to mechanically, because our body is very mechanical in some mm -hmm. ways, right? It's, uh, yes. And it's, you know, you pull on one thing and something else is impacted as well. And we don't always think about that, but in general, these services are excellent for wellness um, beyond just treatment, but mm -hmm. sort of thinking of the preventative aspect of it so yeah. that we can be, because we can't really avoid how we do certain things. Um, we can do them better though. Posture, we spoke about a few times. In your, um, at your clinic, do you also have the option of teaching people about good posture? Is that something that you do anyway in your sessions when come, someone comes to see you? Yeah, that's typically something that I speak with with everybody yeah. because um, it is- It's it huge. Does, yeah. it, it is huge, it's huge. And most of my patients do have, have office jobs, desk mm -hmm. jobs, where they are sitting for long periods of time and um, your posture does tend to collapse and that can lead to so many different aches and pains. So by improving posture, by improving the strength and the stability um, of your body, it helps so much in, in the prevention of future pain uh, or the prevention of re-injuring. I want to mention something as well in order for the show to be truly inclusive for everybody that even for our viewers who don't have desk jobs, you know, for people who are out there in very different fields, this service is still relevant. Say, for example, if you have a career where you drive a lot, whether it be, you know, buses or trucks or this or that, you're still sitting mm -hmm. and you're still in a certain posture. So you can still benefit from the adjustments. Absolutely. Um, when you're in, if, whether you're in construction or you're in a sports field or there's a range of professions, really all of them, I think regardless of what it is that we do, we don't just have to be at a nine to five desk job in order to benefit from some of these um, techniques and whatnot. 
Yeah, everyone, whether whether you are in a desk job or a very active job, right. um, there are kind of different components to what you're consistently doing that might be providing um, some of your aches and pains. Mm -hmm. So what, what we do is really try and find out exactly what it is that's causing you your pain, whether it's more of a sedentary job or whether it's a very physical job, because there can be certain imbalances um, which are leading to some pain. So again, whether it's mm -hmm. sedentary or very active or somewhere in the middle, um, I think that almost everyone can benefit from chiropractic for sure. The great thing that you've mentioned here is even the very active jobs because automatically we were talking about the sedentary jobs and thinking, okay, every half an hour, every 30 minutes, we want to get up and move and be active because we're not. But there are jobs where you're always very, very active. So maybe there the treatment is slightly different that maybe every 30 minutes you need to take a break and yeah. you know position your body in a different way as well. But true enough that most of us in our work will be in similar postures of whatever that is for us. Mm -hmm. And so we always need to sort of get out of that a little bit as well to do the reverse to our body so that we're in our, in our best state. Yeah, absolutely. Very, very interesting. Well, <laughs> it was great having you here because I really feel like enough people don't know enough about chiropractic services. I think it really is something that perhaps you think about once you're in an accident or once something is severe or it's one of those needs-based things. Mm -hmm. So. As we uh, close off for today, there's a couple messages that I really want to leave um, with the guests, and of course I'll give you a chance to say the same, but one thing I'd like all of us to think about is I'd like, to think, I'd like us to think about wellness in a very holistic fashion. It's not just doing one thing or the other. It's doing everything every day consistently well and being cautious of what leads to what. So sometimes we'll, we'll let something prolong and we won't really take a second to say, you know what, this might be the cause of something like this. So being very cautious of, of our posture, of our positions, of, of course, our atmosphere, what we eat, how often we exercise. Health is such a comprehensive topic and wellness is such a comprehensive field and the service providers you have out there are equally comprehensive as well. So there are excellent services out there and chiropractic service being a huge one that are gonna help us lead our healthiest lives, that are going to help us feel good, that are going to help us relieve some of the pain that we have in our everyday, everyday lives that, that some of us really learn to live with. I know when I very saw you for the very first time, one of the things that I said was, I have crazy back pain, but I've just learned to live with it because what else do you do? You have to go on with your day every day and you don't have to. This is what I've learned this year. You don't have to live with that pain. There are ways that you can do things differently every day that help relieve some of that. And then of course there are professionals such as yourself that also support in that and you can live pain free. It's a very, very important, um, important part of our lives to be able to, to have the energy that we need and to not have pain consume any of that energy. Uh, so please do think about chiropractic care, whether you're in a desk job or otherwise, um, just go in once, even maybe speak to someone and see if this is something that would benefit you. If it doesn't, then that, that's fine. But if it does, then you can determine how often you want the treatments, uh, what kind of plan you have. Clearly, we've discussed that affordability um, and access to service doesn't have to be an issue because there are services that are prorated in their pricing. If you can't afford a top clinic, there are other services the government provides that will still give you access to at least go and see whether this is something that can benefit you. At the end of the day, we want to live our fittest, healthiest lives every day so that we can do everything that we need to do and do it really, really well. So thank you for being here. Tell us what you'd like to leave the audience with as well. Um, so with today's society and having such an increase in chronic pain, um, I think that chiropractic can be a very helpful tool to benefit those, those individuals. So um, I hope that this discussion really helped to kind of demystify what chiropractic is uh, and how it may help you. Um, so if you have any questions, you can always contact myself or um, definitely take a look at your provincial chiropractic associations. There's a lot of great information on there as well if you have any additional questions about what it is that we do as chiropractors.
Thank you so much, Miranda, for being on the show. Thank I will you. definitely have Miranda's contact um, on screen as well for any of you that have any questions. Otherwise, we live in an age of social resources as well and the web. So maybe just even go online and learn a little bit more about this if you feel like possibly this could be something that could benefit you. And there's really a wide range of us that can benefit from this. Mm -hmm. So wonderful to have you here to help us uh, take us through a little bit of, like you said, demystifying a service that we don't oftentimes think about unless we urgently need to. Yeah. So wonderful to have you here and uh, looking forward to learning more from you in future episodes. Thank you. On behalf of the show, thank you everyone for joining us for this very first episode in 2019. We will see you back again in studio next Sunday. Take care, have a healthy week, have a happy week.